test. So what's actually happening on Stephen right now, we're making sure we're having a test. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, experimenting on students and animals. It's not a good thing. <laughs> but in any case, there's some, this is some old techniques. This is actually a wax that is still kind of um, gooey. But you, it comes, it, it's, it's pretty much it's this product here, you know, this nose and scar wax. It's an old-fashioned product. It's just kind of gooey. And it, you know, it's flesh-colored, and it, it sort of does a quick way of, I'm just going to put some on. Um, you do it, you put, have to put it on with a palette knife, and you sort of roll it on. You can use it with your fingers. But it's malleable, and it's, it's pretty wax-like. None, wax -like. None of this is actually going to stay this, because we're going to paint over it and put more blood on it, and eventually go to our blood effects, which once upon a time we used to make our own blood, and I can give recipes how to make your own blood, edible and not. Because you wanted to wash out a costume, but I, I, I will say that we're gonna, you know, there will be a grand experiment at the end. Um, because one of the things that happens is a lot of times we have to use blood in theater, and the things you wanted to do is to wash out. And if it's near your face, it needs to be something you can digest. And there's all sorts of capsules. You can get clear gel in capsules. You can actually fill them with blood, but it's usually uh, there's a product. Ben Nye makes a product that is uh, tastes like mint. And there's a product that you can actually make it up yourself, and you can do it with chocolate syrup and food coloring and Cairo syrup. So you have to make sure somebody's not diabetic. <laughs> but I mean, so these, the, there are things that you have to check yourself out with and make sure that you're not going to hurt the person that you're trying to make look iller than they really are. Um, a couple of things are going on. So, so this is that wax. This here is just an old-fashioned technique, too. We're just taking paper toweling. You get Scott towel, brown towel. And I've taken a, this light flesh color, liquid latex, and I've applied it and sort of applied it to the skin and sort of made layers because it needs to dry in between. It's a way to make sort of uh, old skin. But there's other products now you can buy that's simpler. There's a skin plast that you can buy that... Um, does the same thing. It does really small wrinkling, but you got to buy. It's it's like called old skin plast, and there's very different things. The, the the market is there now. So this is the way you used to do it. It's the same kind of thing, but it's a little quicker. A little quicker. It still takes you two hours to do this. Hey, come on in. We just started. Yeah. Hi. Just pull a seat up. You can pull over there. Yeah, whatever. Um. So, so so again, you have to make sure that. You do a test and make sure you're not allergic to the latex. There's other products called Prosade, which is um, acrylic that you can get that actually feathers out a lot of materials. But gee, it's you got to do a test first and make sure that it's not going to have a skin reaction. Um, so I was saying what's happening on poor Stephen here is I've been doing some techniques. We did the, this is the wax nose putty paste, which is sort of you know like I said it, it's still movable, but we'll stop it a little bit. We'll get powder and all on it. Um, this is latex, uh, this kind of pink latex with more skin tone to Stephen with uh, just paper toweling. And then this is vermiculite, <laughs> which is a plant material you put in the potting soil. And I've used it on clothes before. Um, that's some of what's, this is dye, it has dye in it, and it makes this chunky um, sort of three-dimensional texture. I've done it on, on distressing on clothes, this particular witch and such, and, and she too is all made of latex and cheesecloth and built up uh, over masks and frames and things. And there's things in here, if you look, at, she's, she's about almost 30 years old from a show we did here. And she also has um, pistachio shells in her to make it a little chunkier, to sort of do the special effects. It's good to close up and it's also good from a distance. So we're, we're experimenting now and seeing if this can actually be a technique we can use on Stephen. And as I said, it's in a stage. It hasn't been finished. Though we were experimenting with a new product um, called Bloodworks. This is Fleet Street. It's kind of a film theater company. And uh, this is Scab. It's a wet material. But it's, it, it, by, we put this on, what, 15 minutes ago? Yeah, there And it's now dry. So it looks like it's congealed but it's all dry, it's not coming off, and it's, it's, it's a pretty good color. Um, I think one of the things about any of these techniques you find out in theater, and in film is, as well, is that realism doesn't always get you the theatrical result you want. 
Hey guys, y'all can come in too. I have to go do your class. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but but what happens here is that you know the color of blood and and the various stages of blood. Yeah. One of the other things you have to look at, you actually have to do some research. And you, you know, you look at unfortunately hospital accidents, things like that, or when friends get hurt or you get hurt yourself, you sometimes do as a designer to look at it and sort of say, how do I recreate that? Because I'm doing this sort of freehand right now, but if I was really doing it for the show, I have to do that research and I have to look at what the, what I'm actually trying to produce. Today, I'm, as I said, I'm freeforming it a little bit and just experimenting and seeing how these techniques work out. So, as I said, this is a new product and what we do with blood, this is a new product. You see I have these blood products up here that we've used in many ways. The thing about them, when you make your own blood, what you tend to do is blood's a little redder and not as blue. And there's a lot of blue in these bloods. And it seems to make it look more realistic, even though it's really theatrical. And so you're, you're doing this test. And I say a lot of times you come to the theater, there's been times that we've done more blood and we pulled back because it was too much and we felt... It, 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 it didn't do the thing it wanted it to do. It has to do, are you trying to shock? Are you trying to make a point? But if it's too shocking and the point of the play is lost, then you're not doing your job. So some of that is what's going on here. But today we're experimenting and, and trying out some effects. So this is all done with paint right now, and it's in, it's in mid-stage. There's these great kits, and, I, and I'm, the reason I'm saying I, I'll give a product name, and it's only because... I've used it and it's just, it works. But you can use other products and use the same colors. It's not quite an endorsement. But um, they have these special effects. Ben Nye has these special effects color wheels. This is bruises. So some of this, this is actually old bruise and this is sort of new bruise. And then they also have, and, and we put a little bit of each of those in there. And I'll show you how to do that. And then this is actually blisters and burns. And uh, we were doing some blisters and burns over here, and then this product is over the top of it. So it's right now it's all dry. It would stay on. Another thing we've done on this arm, this is an old-fashioned uh, product called collodion, but it's, it's highly flammable, so you, know, you need to be ventilating. And again, you want to test and see if it works. And it also is a way to do scarring. And right now, close up, it looks, it really, it, it, it looks pretty realistic. That would not read on the stage. So I would, I would, I'd be playing with it a little bit more today. And then again, this is another buildup of the scar. But what is different, we've actually put a little bit of base over this. And I use watercolor bases. Um, and these are actually Aquacolor, Crylon, another company. These are watercolor bases, and we put that over that, and then we powder it. So all this stuff starts setting into the skin. So... And then what I should quickly say what we're doing to Stephen's face here. What I was trying to do here is actually use a bar of ivory soap to sort of try to take out his eyebrows a little bit so we could do some more work over the top of his eyes. And you, you layer it in, you let it dry, you layer it in, you let it dry, and then you start applying um, the watercolor over it. And we'll let that dry, and we'll come back and keep doing it. So I'm, I'm going to jump around. But anyway, so this is now ready. We're going to start putting a little more base over this. Um, I also have a clear latex, and that would just mean it would dry clear instead of this sort of pink color. Um, and then you, you, it pretty much comes in those two colors is what you can get. And then, and then you can actually, you know, use whatever base you need for the skin tone or what the effect you're trying to do over that. And this, wa this washes off with water. A lot of this other stuff is going to come off with alcohol. And we're going to do this. This arm is, is just a disaster. Steven, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, please don't play in the road. Okay, we've got that one. And we're going to see what happens here. And sometimes I have to, I really, I do experiment. It's not... Um, and if I find that fact, oh wow, that's really great, we can use that again. But normally I'm doing something, I'm doing research for the piece I'm doing, and I need to figure it out. And that's sort of why I brought in that wedding dress over there, which is from the last show we did, um, to just closed a week ago, the, the um, Easto Westo, and there were two trolls, and she was the troll that was going to get married, 
and the wigs over here, and then I actually, on the iPad, I have um, some pictures of, of tests, of the makeup tests. And there's some of the same sort of mold growing on the dress technique, and I'll do it on Steven, that we did on, on them. And it, it, it's, it's really fast and fun because it's impressionism. Or you do stuff, I, I was doing um, tests to see how gross to make the hair, or we made it less gross, and this is actually the vermiculite again in latex over a synthetic wig. And the way I colored it was putting acrylics but also dye into it. And it's, it's, it's a nice little test. But you can see, yeah, it won't come out. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to somebody's real hair, but, but that's something you can actually get some texture that way. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you, Steve. All right. I'll do a little, let's do a little bruising. Um, another thing, these are stipple brushes. These are great. These are just, this is also, you can do this to make beards. Um, these things, it, it does beautiful impressionism. And so what I do is I just get a little bit of it on there, and I can test it on myself and see what under color. Um, you want to do start your face? You want to do black and white? Sure. Okay, let's do the eyebrow that we did, but let me get, get powder back to first. Now, I, you know, I, I just saw a tutorial on the internet that actually they were doing serious makeup with what people have in their normal street makeup kits. Some of these colors do exist that way, and you could probably do this very simply from the, you know, going to the drugstore or going to the cosmetic counter and just getting non-specialty makeup and just get the colors and do it. So, Stephen, let's do a black eye. And again, you know, I'm... I'm winging it, but what I would really do is I would go back and make sure I had um, some good research and sort of figure out where this eye would be, how nasty this would be. And part of the reason I took his eyebrow out, I was thinking about this, is that I could get more black eye that way. I started with the, the, uh, the redder color. And then sometimes if you get too far, I can show you how to fix that back. You can take your finger and sort of blend it a little bit. This is a very fresh thing going on right now. Look up. Yeah. But it really is about layers. It's not about just getting it all in one step. And I also think of it more as impressionism painting, but the colors sort of all blend together sometimes. And, and, all, and if you look at it close, the colors are all separate, but if you look at it in the distance, they start blending in a nice way. So. And it really doesn't look real until I put the powder on it and try to blend it into the skin. Having fun yet? Okay. Now, the reason I'm making him look up is that otherwise I'm losing the under eye. I'll look up again. And it tends to get pretty dark in there. Now, I have a little more yellow in there, even though it's younger color. Look up. Because I want to lighten it just a little bit. So the yellow is usually a little bit more of a, uh, a younger color for bruises, but I'm just not good again. What's happening, I'm having a little trouble with that mixing over with the eyebrow, but we'll see. I can go back to the close again. looking pretty nasty. 
But to see, it's like it probably would not go there, but I'm doing it only, I'm trying to exaggerate it at this point. If you come to the end of the class next week, this is where we get to. We start with straight makeup. We do a little corrective, we do a little age, and the last thing we do is we do blood and bruises because everybody wants to do this. I don't understand this. It's just, it's, it's, um, I'm trying to think, is it or something? I'm just messing with you. Now this, this stuff, this is, this is something else. So this bruise has gone into cuts now. Um, this one, this is the washable one. So I should be careful about your eyes. Close. And I'm doing that, and then I'm going to get, where's my new stuff? Now, now I put that down as a, as a line. Now I'm going to put some of this stuff. So let me scab it a little bit. I've, I've actually done some posters for some students that were pretty nasty that they wanted to um, look like they beat each other up. Um, so that has happened before. This, this stuff is great. This is like my new favorite product, guys, this dry black, because it as I said, it doesn't come off. So we, we started there, Stephen. Okay. We'll, we'll get some more. Uh, here. That is so quiet. There it is. <laughs> this, 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 this tastes like peppermint. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting it in the room. Mm -hmm. It smells nice. It smells nice. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like that. It's zesty mint flavor. You're not supposed to eat it, but so. And we can put it on more <laughs> as like raisin okay. um, So we need to do some more. Like I said, these, these I actually started putting the colors down. I can put more color on it to get it a little deeper. It's been powdered, so it's not going to come off. Side, you know, is it brush burn? I mean, you really do. You, you, it's part of it. You, you do have to sort of figure out what it is you're trying to do. You can experiment, but again, it helps if you sort of say, "Oh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do that effect." Or, you know, this is this is I think I'm calling my zombie skin here because um, this vermiculite. This is pretty nasty. And again, I get well now. My palettes were nice and fresh when I started. It will not be nice and fresh when I finish because I'm just going to use the colors. You know, this, this could be good for blistering, actually. Now, what you don't want to do is get it too covered. You want to be able to see skin coming out in between. And if you've gone too far and you're saying, oh, I'm sorry, I, I did it too far. Okay, this again, this is, I'm waiting. This is, this is oil base, you know, sort of cream base, and this is water base. But I can mix the two up together because this will eventually act like a powder. And then I can sort of put it back over it and say I went too far. And then I can blend. And in blending, start setting it down really deep. I'm proud of that. And then I'm going to move on and do a little blood work in those scars. So. Oh, and then and then remind me to come back and put um, dirt into this. Okay. If you notice his feet, see, I, I, I was experimenting with a new product. This is a spray-on product. Let me, let me see how that works on that. This is called Rotten Stone. <laughs> um, it, it, it actually is an aerosol. It makes it an aerosol, and let's see what that does. Now we got to clean up that. Yeah, it gives it. It looks like you've been burnt a little bit there. Let that dry. It, this is also washable, 
so the water's important. Um, I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to start putting in, I can do that with this, the cream. And then we can decide that these are going to be, the nice thing about this is it, got, it has, has some texture that I can follow instead of inventing a line. And I'm, and I'm just using this palette because I, I need a color. I need a black. I need a red. I will blend a little bit. And I will not be done until I put real blood back, uh, the fake real blood back on top. Real blood. <laughs> My sense is sort of the old fashioned way of doing it. Um, some is just putting red in the middle, black on one side and white on the other. So you have a highlight, low light, and you, you're just sort of painting it in. Does that just make it more visible? Mm -hmm. it, it really is. It's like light comes forward, dark goes back. You, you're trying to make something that is not three-dimensional, three-dimensional. So, I mean, this, this is a little, you know, it's a big proscenium stage, you can do it. But even, even here, close up, if I just do it a little bit, it just gives it a little more dimension. Not as flat. But, but again, the real trick is going to be, what helps is the, uh, like this stuff, the, the very various blood products, what helps about it is that it's, um, it has, it has a, a sheen still to it. So that, um, and you do have to think, okay, is this fresh or not? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's the best, this part of it. Uh, here's some blood with the So this is some made blood. Sometimes, the other, the, the, there's this Paramount blood, which I get from Alcone down in New York. The great thing about it is that it, um, and this is if you can have a wet technique. You have to realize there's clothing involved and washing it and such. And so if we don't have to wash it, you can get wet and leave the room and be fine with it. But if you have to get it wet, I mean not wet, then, then what I just did is probably not good. Though I can do that and then powder it and see if that makes a good effect. Um, or use an, not only this, this dry blood, there's other dry bloods you can get to put on it that still has a glisten in it. What does the powder do again? It sets, sets it. Sets all the color, and it also sets it into your arm, so it actually looks a little bit more like it's natural. And what I didn't do really well yet is to sort of try and do this and sort of try to get it all off. So what I'm trying to do is trying to make it so that it doesn't look like it's sitting on top, but actually is part of the skin. And again, we get away. We can get away with some things with distance, which is really good in the theater because we usually aren't this close up. If we're this close up, I'm going to be a little. I'm going to do a little bit more fine detail like this, and really do it really, really carefully. Um, if I'm doing stuff in the theater, I mean, you can get away with this. So this is looking pretty good, even close up. But this is a little scary texture going on here. Uh, but we have to make sure that our test works. How does your arm feel? Yeah. And you can do stuff like this. This is ash powder. This now this is nasty stuff. This is it's not it's not real ash. It is it's a powder covered colored to be ash. Um, it's like Texas dirt, and I have some. Well, they call it plains dust in some companies. Um, that is really just highly pigmented powder, and it just you know the thing about it is that it, it's sort of dead and stuff and dirty stuff, and you can dirty clothes with it, and you can dirty skin with it. It's sort of what this is doing. Um, you know, it's, it's a way of, and, and that's why we have the drop cloth, you know, it's a way of getting, you know, a certain look quickly. So this is a dusty look. There's this dusty look. And then if you just want a dirty look. I, I kind of like these spray aerosols better, but the thing about it is we've got one on there that looks like rotten stone, and it does. It's sort of the, the, that glisten in there. We put all three color, colors on its foot there, um, but it's glisten. And this, and this is this is the plain This stuff does wash out, but it sometimes doesn't. 
And so it's one of those things that you, you don't like to use um, all the time. Now it's making him look really pretty, but I can, it, it can make, it, you know, it looks giving you a suntan rather than it being dirt. <laughs> and there's a third color that is more muddy. And, and this is still another sort of process that you can actually, you know, change texture quickly. Insect effects. And then where are we? Let me see. Which ones do we want to do more? We want to do that one or more bruises? What do you want? More bruises or? Yeah, more bruises. Bruises, bruises. bruises. laceration. Yeah. What, what? Uh, I just want to see. We have to, we have to fix those, though. So. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's somewhat the same technique. I'll, I'll do more bruises, too, but I'll, I'll just finish up. But you see, the nice thing about the, the nose wax is that it's still pliable, and, and it's, it works for some things, but I can get a really deep gash in here. And then, and then the, 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 we, we need to put this blood effect in there, I think. Yeah. Now, see, when you powder, it is going to take it down a little bit, so it's a little older. This is just good for this scarring. Can you guys see that? Like, this one? Oh, we can get close to it, yeah. To me, it's very yeah. convincing. This, 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 this is like, this is film quality, almost. This, this one, just flex it again. Yeah. It looks like he's actually, you know, but, but then the other one is not. It's theatrical. Right. And you can feel it. It's like, oh, wow. it's like glue sitting on the skin. Yeah. That's the, that's the collodion. It really does look like a scar. Yeah. And we can paint it up a little bit better, too. I know. It's just, if you get it wet, it just looks, it just looks so much more realistic. More bruising. Again. Um, uh, so we'll 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 and okay. Do you have someone else have one there? That's just my skin. Oh no. <laughs> oh now the oh, okay. so this is you gotta make sure you don't have. Yeah, that see how fast that can be. It's real. It's it's because the color palette is so good, and you know, it just are the right colors for it. If we don't like it, we can put more on it. Don't show, don't take pictures and show your mom. I'm sorry, I'm really in love with this texture because it's like it's not something you can usually do, raise on people that way. Um, a lot of things what people do is they actually make prosthetics separate and then glue them on and so you can repeat them. You, do, you actually end up doing um, molds and things so that you can repeat the latex process so that that's how people do it in film and video. But um, theater, a lot of times you, you are actually having makeup artists and, and students and actors learning how to do some of this stuff. And unfortunately, or fortunately, spending a lot of time, because it's not, it's not usually quick. Um, I can show later some of the makeup effects of this and how, you know, what sort of things we did. Oh, I said I was going to do a troll. Yeah. So I can do the troll. So I'm going to play with the, the back as well.
Um, trolls are really easy, we discovered, once we experiment our colors. And natural sponges. The natural sponges are just really beautiful, big versions of these stipple brushes, which are just a hard sponge. And you're, you're welcome to take a look at this stuff in a little bit. Let's see. So now we're going to do something that, that's going to match the dress over there. Sorry, Stephen. Um, and what they did, the wigs, who did that too? Put the wig on. Uh, the wig actually um, had sections of green, so we would, we would actually start and put some of that into their faces. And we would flatten it out so that it wasn't in normal places. You know, it's the idea that the mold was growing on them. Sorry. And so, as I said, I love these sponges because they, um, they're irregular enough and they sort of do the right thing. Such a good sport. Oh, and you see, I'm actually doing on the clothes because we did do that. It went down on the clothing as well. And I, I'm not really inventing this because what we did, we actually took uh, Katrina mold patterns and, and did this as sort of the impetus for these dresses and the inspiration for them. And so we were looking at the patterns and realizing they would start very intense in the center and then spread out. So, so there actually is a natural reference to this that we thought of, even though it becomes very stylized in the world of the trolls and the play. How do you even begin to do that research? Is it like a Google search? No, either, I have books. It, it's like, and I, and I have primary research, and I just, yeah, and you, you know, you just, you keep it, you collect it. So, I mean, this could, he, he, his mold's a little happier than home, her mold, because I put a little brighter green, but it's pretty much, that was it that we did and did the effect. Now what we could do to make it um, more special is a very nice effect. You can put sparkle in it. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to look, okay? Me neither. Okay. But, okay, this is a little more glamour uh, <laughs> destruction. But the thing about, the one, one good thing about uh, any kind of metallic is that it actually is a nice brightener for many different things. So, so you know, the golds and, and the coppers and the silver are actually really kind of surprising and useful for other things. Because you, you can actually see that it's, it's working as a highlight. And this is just powder. It's not anything odd. It is odd. <laughs> No, no, do you see, do you see yourself? Have no, you seen yourself I yet? Looked. Okay, you haven't looked in a while? I'll wait. Okay. Um, but, you know, the, and I could powder over this and it would set in, in the skin a little bit more, but, but you can sort of get the idea that, you know, this, if you got, if you walk across the hall there and looked in, all these things are trying to be made for a theater that you could actually see the scale. And I'm doing this really close, and y'all are closer than what you'd see on stage, but it's the idea that you could stand there and it, it would take you back in a moment. Yeah. Questions about this at this stage? I want to see what we are. Time wise. Oh, okay. um, more blood? Can you make like a like something like that? That's starting to be it, but but I would I would probably not use that material. I would probably work and do um, some sort of off of him and, and, make, and make some little latex scars because that's, that's really going to be the only way and, but I try to keep it kind of flat and actually make sure there's a dent in it and then I would paint in it. I would do what this, this technique I was doing over there about painting in mm -hmm. and then, but you'd make it really red, 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 really, really clear that they're red and depending on how you were doing it, um, I mean, you could take you could take a lipstick red and put it in there, but you, you still need to set it. And then, if you were actually going to try and do something that was be wet, you can either buy another of these products, or you can actually make up some of the blood and, and drip it. Because one of the things we are going to do, we actually are going to do um, 
as I said, there's been times that I've had to do blood effects where people are just covered in blood, and it's been too much. So we, we were going to do some of that on Stephen. Uh, one of the things about special effects is if you notice, we put him in a white t-shirt. A lot of times people will want to do blood effects on, on stage where a gun goes off and something bursts and they have blood. And we can get little baggies. I didn't set those up. That's, you know, that's another special effects with probably pyrotechnics and Cosmo. But we can, uh, you do little baggies of this blood, tie them in, and you can either make packs inside the clothes, or sometimes they just pocket one and they pop it. So those, those are, and, 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 and then the other thing you want to do is you want to have them in light enough clothing that the blood shows. And you also want to make sure your lighting designer is not going to put red light on you because you will not see it. Because the red will, they, they sort of work each other out. Everything becomes red and you can't see the blood effect. Um, so, and that's happened. I've done that and it's happened. I've had this great effect on stage and it was light enough and it worked every time and there was blood on the hands and blood on the clothes, but the lights were red so you never saw it. And, you know, no, no amount of chocolate syrup could help at that point. So, um, it's really important that you wear white to get those effects. The other thing that's really important is that you um, have multiples so that you can test it and make sure it washes out. Because I've actually had, you know, put this very blood all over a faux Chanel suit that we built in white. And she was covered in blood. And every night it washed out. But we made two suits. So that if one got pink, we could have one permanently in blood and one clean. Because the, the effect was that she had to show up in the suit every night and then, you know, shoot someone and be covered in blood coming out. Not realistic, but, you know, it still was the, the dramatic effect that we wanted to do and show. And, um, and then we had the show where in Electra just a couple years ago, the young woman was supposed to be covered in blood. And we did, the, we have a backstage picture that I can't locate. But we were all back there and it ended this test. And there was this young woman. I mean, it was Carrie in that sense. It's like she had been dropped a bucket of blood over her. It was too much. It just, it was just a little bit, I mean, it became funny rather than becoming scary. And so those kind of balances we sort of work out. So we're going to do some blood on him. Um, and the reason, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I sort of diverted from your question, but, but, but it's because of the white shirt and sort of the things, that the effects you're trying to do. And then how do you carry it out? So that if you do do wet blood, you might want to be in white clothes. <laughs> and you might, not, might also want to make sure that if they get pink after washing them, it's OK. Because that's, it's, it's going to be part of it. And you should test it out or figure it out. Mm -hmm. Or try to find a product that is, you know, buy something that's dry. And I can give you that information where, where you can buy stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Other kind of questions? Things that I'm not telling you that you really want to hear about. Yeah. I was just wondering generally how long you've been doing this and how you ended up in this area. Oh my god. Uh, that's a good question. I actually, uh, I've been a costume designer forever. I've been at Williams almost 30 years. And I start, actually when I was back at the University of New Orleans, one of the first things that happened in the theater department, they called up and said, we, we ha are having a disaster drill at Baptist Hospital and we need a bunch of theater students to come do makeup. And one of the first makeup assignments I had was a disaster drill where we had chicken bones and, and, and this sort of thing. I was doing this sort of thing on the spur of the moment, building this stuff up and doing it in basically a two hour prep time for people to go and be part of this disaster so that the paramedics and everybody come in and, and work on them. And um, so I don't always have the chance to do this. And when I do, I try to stretch myself a little bit more and try to find some new products. And th this was actually wonderful. So we did find some new products that we actually applied quickly to. I didn't know we were going to have this project to do it to, but we could apply it. And so, you know, I usually don't get to do this aspect. I get to teach. Uh, one section every now and then in makeup and various students get to, to have the basics. As I said, they'll get to do some of this in, in a workshop and they'll do it to themselves. And everybody usually gets to try to do as much gore as possible in the last 15 minutes of the class and then walk out. And this year it's going to be Halloween, so it's even 
I think they're going to come prepped and with some ideas that they want to do. Or other people are going to say, can I come in? Can I stop in? Can I be a, you know, can I be a subject? And that might be actually kind of fun to have people come in and also demo on the, not the class. So, yeah. Other kind of questions? Yeah. Any of you going to try to do any of this stuff? Yeah, no? Maybe. Yeah. So, I guess I had a question. Um, yeah. Are there any like specific like techniques or products you recommend for like long term? Like if you have to say you had to be in costume like all day, mm -hmm. um, are there certain ones that like don't like rub off on clothing as easily or like? Well, the, 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 all this powdery I keep doing in between that actually prevents a lot of it from rubbing off. And, and most of this stuff will probably be on pretty well. Uh, the aqua color. Um, these water base bases. In fact, that's something that I did to Stephen first. Is it, I didn't do it to his arms, but I actually to his face. I put the base down first, mm -hmm. so that some of these colors, uh, the reds particularly, and if you use commercial lipstick, put a base on first because a lot of those will stain. The pigments will stain through to your skin, and so you don't necessarily want to be living with that the next day. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I can't, I mean, a, a lot of these things, I said the aqua color, water base seem to be pretty good. These tend to work pretty well, these, uh, these Ben Nye uh, cream bases. Um, most companies, you know, they've been tested a long time and, and they're just good. So Krylon, Ben Nye, um, I'm trying to think what else, Miron, um, there's more. Makeup's changing a lot too right now too because everything's sort of moving to powders and to minerals, and so it's less and less this sort of it, it's taking another evolution right now, and that's why it's kind of exciting as Stephen said, you know, that I can actually say stuff like this new product, this um, Dirtworks company that is they have grime and they have they have stone and they're they're meant to wash out with soap and water, so they're a little bit kinder to your skin as well. Um, you can anybody, any, anybody can email me and ask me specific questions, and I can. And then there's some good companies to look for. Um, and there's actually a local supplier down in New York that carries everything, and that's another thing. And they can, and it takes one day to get stuff up here. They have a website too. This is, and you can look up all the stuff. You know. Yeah. What is it? These spirit gum and spirit gum remover. Oh, spirit gum and spirit gum. I actually have some of that up here. Um, it's this material, it's, it's, this is a glue, spirit gum is a glue, and, and each one has a specific uh, alcohol and mineral and uh, spirits kind of remover. And you use it a lot of, on big hair, so like putting on a mustache or sideburns. Um, you can actually make still crepe hair beards out of what they call crepe hair that comes in strings and you can actually apply it. it. It's a really good glue. It tends not to sweat off, but you need a special remover to be able to take it off. Yeah, I, I brought these out uh, particularly so that if there's something, somebody asked me to do something and I didn't have material here, I have material there. Because I thought I meant like the actual type of gum. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, the, it's these, probably, they're liquid. It, it's a glue, a mastic, and then, um, then the remover itself. What is the soap that you put on his eyebrows <laughs> for? It's ivory. It's ivory bar soap. It's, it, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. It's like, again, this is like one of these old, old, old fashioned makeup uh, tricks. And I was just trying to flatten the, um, the hairs. You could actually take this, this wax and do the same thing, but it's harder to work out of your uh, eyebrows later because it's, it's kind of like this is a little bit more gummy and since it is a wax. Whereas, if you don't sweat and you don't get wet, I mean, if it's, then you, this is good. Otherwise, it, it will be soap and it will sting your eyes. So, for a photo shoot, for something like this, or a couple hours out in the streets, it'd be fine. Otherwise, there's other there's other materials you can actually do to, to get rid of your eyebrows. Um, I'm probably looking into more experimenting for Monday when I have to do some drag makeup for a character for the next play we're doing. Um, Ritz, and there's a woman who's basically is doing this very, very extreme makeup and a lot of eyelashes, a lot of eyeliner, a lot of. I, I think we might get rid of her eyebrows so we can make exaggerated eyebrows and make her bigger than herself. And, and so I'm getting ready to find another product than this. I know this works, and sometimes it's just nice to show that it's really something that simple that you can use and use it out of your, your 
wardrobe or in your bathroom and just go to the drugstore and get something. But it's ivory. It's not, I have, none, none of the other ones work. <laughs> it's this, whatever the comp compounds in this is the simplest and seems to be the, the easiest to use chemically on the skin. And make it washable. I mean, the other thing about this, as I said, he's got a couple of things on him that it's gonna, we're going to try to, you know, use alcohol to get it off. But most of this is pretty much water-based. Um, that, yeah, that's water-based. This is not the cream base. It's going to take um, a makeup remover to come off. But by having the water base underneath, the powder underneath will also help it all clean up better. Yeah. So it's not as harsh on your skin. That's the other thing. It really is harsh on your skin. And you're trying, and, and you're trying to um, protect them as best, protect the actors as best as possible, but at the same time, you're trying to get an effect. That hopefully is, you know, short term rather than long term. In 24 hours is probably you know, fine. You might still have to refresh things, but you know, you can have a little emergency kit and such, depending on what you want to do. And and, and there's also metallics. There's uh, a product that there's like a liquid brightness that you can put on that a company makes, Crowland makes, that is it just sort of makes a shimmer in your skin. That's a great product. It's kind of weird. It looks like mermaid. You'd be Opalescent, or you can be gold without you know suffocating yourself. <laughs> so that sort of thing. Yeah. Other kind of questions? Because I'm going to make him. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put some blood on him. You want to try it? Sure. Or, or, or before we do it, does anybody want to come take a look real quick, get close before it? It's going to get messy. If you want to take a look at him and, and just ask questions, or you're happy where you are. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Oh yeah, well, yeah, and we got a picture of him right here. It, it, it's, it's a real hodgepodge. It's, 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 yeah, it's like a smorgasbord. Sure. We get, get rid of the chair because you. We... So as I said, backstage when we did, oh, I did Electra. Can I can I can I put your hand? Yes. Uh, when we did Electra, we basically, um, well, no, I don't want to your head because we have to put the peppermint on your head and this on your body. It does do some good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, it's going to be a little cold. I'm not trying to be cold. So basically, you, you know, this will wash out. These are not his clothes. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like it's really cold. It's really cold. Surprisingly cold. Well, it, it, it's room temperature and it's a little cold. So, and, and, yeah. <laughs> but did you see how it's a nice blue red? Yeah. Red? Mm -hmm. close yeah, close your eyes. But you can see how chocolate syrup would be really good. Chocolate syrup and strawberry syrup. So. Yeah. Because the chocolate has enough blue in it to turn it, yeah. Why don't you put your hand up to your face? I like, see, they're the two different colors. You can see, see how they're two different colors, but it's like, so, so that you, you, you play with it and figure out what you're doing. Or you make your own. <laughs> what do you, if you make your own, what do you? Do oh, okay. Uh, uh, Cairo syrup, if, you, if it's edible, Cairo syrup. You experiment with the proportions. You don't use much red food coloring, um, a little blue food coloring, and it's like a, like, a, like a drop and to three. Um, but you experiment. You got to experiment. But Cairo syrup, you could start with the dark because it actually has a little bit of brown in it that would probably get closer to there, and you would, might not have to add as much blue. Or you start with the clear, so you can see what the color you're mixing. You could actually put chocolate syrup in it too if you wanted. Um, if people have peanut allergies, <laughs> you know, one of the things you can actually make a chunky uh, uh, blood and throw a little peanut butter in it instead of, and it, and it actually works pretty well. Yeah, but it's, it's it, 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 yeah, it text, yeah, you got it. And then the other thing you can do is that in, in terms of washing, and this is why, like in Ashland, they made a recipe. In other words, that's great. Yeah, just get it you know, just all over you. Um, they, they they made these other recipes out of. Um, it's laundry detergent again, food coloring, a little, just a touch of blue, and ivory. Uh, I know people have tried Dawn now, 
because Dawn washes out of everything and takes the oil out as well. So um, people have experimented with Dawn, but it's got a blue tin to it, mm -hmm. so you might not have to use blue at all. So it's, it's, it's a little bit of experimenting to get the right consistency, mm -hmm. and it's been a while since I've made a, uh, a recipe because we're now sort of enamored about this blood and this Paramount blood that, as I said, washes out of most things. It washes out of polyester, it's washing out of uh, synthetics and, and some wool, some silk, cotton. But you have to experiment, and as I say, I always buy two if I'm going to use blood, if I know I'm having blood in the show, because I really want to be able to do this. So, yeah. yeah. How big was the line that mauled you? Yeah. <laughs> you should see the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, I, okay, and, I, and, here, and if you're really doing your research, you know, like, we, we could actually drop, figuring out what it is, you know, blood from the ears, you know, where, where yeah, I know, it's, this is, it's a little bit Carrie-esque, yeah. Um, we will actually, we do have shower facilities here for him to clean up. <laughs> and as I said, I said, we we're, gonna, we're not going to do your own clothing so that we have clothing that we can wash in Dunlin, yeah. What's a Cairo syrup? Caro is, is basically a corn syrup that you can make corn pies out of and such. You get it in the baking section, and it's, it's corn syrup. And it's pretty thick. It has this great consistency, you know. This, uh, in fact, let's see. Let's see I, bet, I bet there is corn. Yeah, corn syrup is the first ingredient in this, and that's what caro syrup is. Um, and they have reds, water. It has a little glycerin, which is why it's got the shiny quality to it. And, but as I said, you can make your own all natural bloods on your own and do the experiment. And it's it's probably a little it's probably cheaper to do. Yeah. Are there edible dyes if you wanted to make like alien blood or something that was like green or purple? You know, the, the the food coloring dyes I'm talking about again are the food colorings that you use in in your uh, baking section. So the, the little reds, the yellows, the greens, and the blues. You can just get those and do it and, and do a mixture that way. And do, yeah, and that and that is edible. I I, I wouldn't. Recommend a whole diet of it, but <laughs> yeah, but it is it is it is a product that you use in baking. That's why I say yeah, and and in fact that's what these dyes are too. Are actually those supposed to be food quality dyes? Yeah. Nice. Anything else? I mean, seriously, people can email me at dbrother at williams.edu, and um, I can send more products and. We, well, we, we'll probably try to take some of this off first and then see what happens uh, before Stephen uh, when we send them off to... I'm, I'm trying to end just a tad early because I realize that we are a little messy. Though this isn't as messy as I thought we were going to be. But I'm serious. Poor, poor Liza Curtis. We had her drenched in blood. We, I mean, it really, it was frightening. It really looked like somebody had, you know, exploded her. <laughs> it was horrible. It was really horrible. It was too horrible, and um, it, it just and, and the backstage, you know, particularly when you see a picture of all of us standing around looking at her, it's, it's, it really is kind of disturbing. But at the same time, this is sort of the world in theater that you're sort of part of, and we are trying to adapt. Have you ever had to do like entrails or? Haven't yet, but I, but I could figure out how to do it. But and then this is the other thing: that you don't want to use real food on stage. I mean, yes, the carol syrup, and that's one thing, because we have mice in the building, but, but real foods uh, and things like meat products and real blood does spoil so quickly that it's actually a health hazard. So this is why you're doing a synthetic thing and doing a, a theatrical part of it, because the real stuff, yeah, people can get sick real quick. And, but entrails, but you know, we, we would probably figure out a way of doing something plastic and, uh -huh. and, and um, gooey and non-meat related. You can make it look like meat and make it non-meat related and then we, we could do it. I, I just haven't had to do it yet. There are plays though. There are plays that you're sort of knee deep in blood that, nowadays and so there's some. Um, but we haven't yet. I mean, you just, you just, just enjoy can, you see, can you see yourself there? Do you see yourself? That seems about right. Yeah. Okay. You should send this to your mom, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>